Hello, my name is Martyr, and this is Let's Play Smooth Operators. Smooth Operators is a simulation game, guys, where you run a call center. And while I'm sure many of you have had terrible memories with call centers, this game, I assure you, is nothing like that. You're not going to be calling people and I'm asking them to buy crap. Uh, it released June 2014 on Steam, and it was developed and published by Hey Deck Games. You can go ahead and get Smooth Operators on Steam for a whopping $2.99, which I usually don't talk about price, guys, but that is a good dang deal, especially for how much gameplay you're going to get out of this game. Now, aside from reminding me of a song by Sade, or Sade, well, that's an, that would be an 80s reference, by the way, Smoother Operators is a business management game, guys, and the unique thing about this game is it also comes with the difficulties of running a, a business management type of deal. You might find, like, uh, your computers are exploding, your workers are calling in sick or asking for days off, or are unhappy and you have to worry about the morale, your building is falling apart, and you need to hire workers to fix the goddamn building. Those are just some of the in-game problems you'll be tackling while trying to run your call center. It's a cute, fun, addictive little game, guys, but for just $2.99 again, I guarantee you, you will get your money's worth. So let's get started, shall we? Now there's two different types of mode that this game features. Normal, where you start off with about 20,000 bucks, and then there's hard, where you only start off with $10,000, and I can imagine you probably don't have as much, you probably have more problems than you would hope. Does that guy have a friggin' sword? Did I just see that? I swear to God, I saw a guy with a sword. I don't know what kind of crazy ass NPCs these are, I have yet to run into them. I'm looking forward to meeting him though. So I already gonna, I already had a game here, I kind of started two modes, and I kind of screwed up, I started with Silky Voices, and then I went to Martyr Sales. Uh, but Martyr Sales is what I've been going with, and that's what we're gonna load up. And I've been playing the game for about two hours now. And that is one thing I will say that, uh, to note, that this is not a game that you're gonna pick up, play, and then get done with within an hour, or even a half hour. This is a game that you're gonna be playing for like a long time, uh, and kind of developing your business. Uh, and starting a new game over and over again, you're not going to get really that far. So, again, 22 days, that took me about two hours. Okay, so let's talk about what you're looking at right here. There's a lot of information I'm going to throw at you guys here. This is my building. This is Martyr Sales. And basically, right now, it's uh, it's about, I think, just about after midnight, before midnight? Yeah, it's before midnight. It's military time. So, yeah, that's about 1146. Um... So actually, my janitors are now going through the building and cleaning this place up. And I'm just going to turn that on for a second here and let them do that job while I talk about the game here. And basically what you're looking at here is the amount of speed. On the top left, you have the speed of the game, which you're going at. And this is something that's kind of important because you're going to want to always keep this at maximum. I just got my daily statistics. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, also, the day basically is how I many days have passed, obviously. The time, obvious. How much cash you have on hand. And your workloads. Now, your workloads basically represent three kinds of different kinds of workloads. Inbound calls, outbound calls, and I think back, af back office items. You can see right here. Um, and basically, each person in your company is assigned a position. You have people who are either working the inbound calls or the outbound calls or the back office crap. And they make you money as that meter gets drained. And basically, what you want to do is tr try to get each one of these categories down to the green as fast as humanly possible before the end of the workday because people only work eight hours. Just like a business, people only work eight hours and they go home and they, plus during those eight hours they have a lunch and they have to take a poop and they have to do a lot of different things. And there's just a lot of different factors that could affect your business. Uh, which is why one of those, this is one of those games that's just gonna take a lot of time investment also. So basically your goal is to get those down to green. If you do manage to get that, you get a hundred dollar bonus. If you don't, like I did, because I apparently had a shitty work day, I'm gonna fire some people, um, you lose a hundred bucks from your revenue. Because basically the uh, person you have a contract with was not satisfied with your work and basically they are gonna take it out of your ass. Uh, well, plus he looks like he's actually putting more work on me than usual, good lord. What the hell happened? That used to be so much more less. What? What? All right. Well, that's fine. And there's a lot of statistics and information here. How much your staff is being paid for. Da -da 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 -da. All that good nitty gritty information. If you like numbers and I don't, so forget that. All right. Yes, I want to save. 
Okay, so once you know what's on the top there, on basically these two buttons here, the HR reports are basically things that happen throughout the day, like if a worker gets sick, or you fired somebody, or somebody quits, it gets listed under the HR reports, and basically from the human resources department. If you might sometimes get requests from your employees to either, I don't know, take a vacation, or whatever have you. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the time here. And then I'm gonna actually just show you kind of a general work day and how that looks. Um, in general, yeah, the game, the game is very enjoyable, guys. It, it, it's very, you know what to say, it's, it's hard. Uh, because you could, everything you see here, I've placed. All you really start off with is this flat building. When you start out the first game, you basically start with this one little building, your, your reception area, and then you have to build outward. And kind of try to build a almost intuitive building design because if you don't, it, it can really affect your sales, actually. If you have too many people, you know, cramming for the elevators, then they can't get to their floor. Well, that's going to affect your business <clears throat> because people need to get around faster. But there is ways to kind of mitigate that and help that out a bit. So as you can see now, they kind of cleaned the entire office. Everything looks all sparkly and clean and pretty and stuff. And now that it's approaching about 8 a.m., workers will start to show up and actually get their asses to work. Okay, so my project manager says that I have no access to the water cooler. Uh, this chick basically just gives you a tip of the day every day. Uh, so project managers are the people that kind of do your research in this game. They basically find, uh, they basically unlock things for you. For instance, they can unlock more floors for your building. Uh, that line right there represents how high I can go right now. And you can go really, really, really high, guys. I don't really, I think the highest floor you can get is 40 floors. That's pretty freaking crazy. That's nuts. I can't imagine a 40 story building here in this game. But they basically unlock all of your different kinds of research, all your different kinds of stuff here. Uh, basically in this menu right here guys there's a lot of different kinds of construction and this is where you're going to be primarily doing most of your construction, your hiring of staff, and basically buying stuff in general. Uh, this menu basically just gives you access to your reports, your clients, your employees, all that good stuff here. <clears throat> and we'll touch upon that a little bit in a little bit. So if I wanted to build another call center, basically a place for uh, people to work out of, I would basically need an other operations block, which is what that represents right there. That pink one right there is the operations block. You have service blocks or which were kind of like your uh, IT guys work and your janitors work out of. Then you have your office, which is where um, your like your researchers work, your HR department, and things like that. And that's all really divided up very well and kind of intuitively for you not to get confused about uh, and to figure out and basically have. <clears throat> you can also buy um, things to kind of help your employees get through their day, like food, services, sanitation, and a recreation center, which is why I'm kind of actually... Well, I'll probably just build an operations center just for you to get an idea <clears throat> of how that works. So I placed an operations, uh, another operations center. And by the way, you can have different clients. Like right now, we're working for the Claw Real Estate. Um, and you will get more clients. You can actually do that by going and hiring a uh, account manager, which basically they look for more contracts and bring you more work. I can, I can barely handle the work I have currently, so I don't want to do that. So once I built that, that floor in, uh, now I need to man that floor. And basically, just for you to know, every uh, staff can work in any type of building. For instance, if I wanted to, I could put uh, operation staff inside of this office over here. Uh, but they will not perform as well and they don't like it, basically. So I'm going to go ahead and put more inbound agents because apparently that is our current problem. Uh, and put them in there and now they will... Oh, I ran out of money. Gosh dang, that's okay though because we'll speed up time here and we'll start with more cash. Now, by the way, that computer just exploded. When my IT department arrives or pulls their head out of their ass, wherever they may be, they will show up and hopefully fix that computer and get things up and running there. So, let's see, do we have enough cash yet? I don't think we do, do we? We're like fluctuating of cash, man, look at that. And that's one thing I will say, the game graphically is very adorable, it's very cute, of course you have those pixel graphics. Uh, the sound of the, no the phones can get very <laughs> overwhelming though. Very, very quickly. And if you're a fan, if you're not a fan of somebody who likes phones, you're, you might get, you might want to just turn your volume down just a little bit. 
So now that we have that manned up, as you can see, as the day starts going by, these meters start coming down. And now that I've put in another inbound floor, basically doing the work there, they are basically kind of jamming through it now uh, and getting it done pretty quickly. And it's only about, I think, like four in the afternoon. They go to about, I think, seven or eight. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but yeah, every time your character basically makes a call, you earn revenue, you basically generate money, and you can take that money and buy other things with it, of course, um, and upgrade your building. There's also many, 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 for instance, if I were to click on the new floor we just built, we could upgrade a floor. I don't exactly have access to the upgrades yet because I've only been playing this game for about two hours. If that tells you how much depth there is in this game, by the way, you can upgrade your floors, you can also train your employees. Uh, where do I train them? Educate, right. You can basically hit, click on educate and that will teach you how to educate your employees and make them more of an efficient worker in general. And you can do that with just about everything. As, aside from that, you can also tear down objects if you need to. For instance, this uh, elevator, I can either upgrade it or I can sell it or I deconstruct it as it were and then put in a new kind of elevator. And there's, there's many different kinds of buildings like a flow tube, a teleporter. It doesn't exactly follow the rules of reality here, guys, but either way, I think that's pretty freaking sweet. I love that. I would love to show you the teleporter. Unfortunately, it costs a shit ton and I don't have any money for that. Uh, but again, this is only, and that's after two hours of playing, so I think it gives you an idea of how long and how much gameplay you're going to get out of this game, guys. And I enjoy that aspect. All right, so speed up time again here. Uh, and basically, yeah, you, I got, looks like I'm going to be, actually make my inbound call goal now that I put in that new floor. Um, looks like it. Am I going to? No, maybe not. I'm not 100% sure. I got pretty damn close to the green. I'm not sure though. We'll see. And now that my janitors are showing up, they're basically going to take care of everything. But yeah, there's just a lot of different issues that can ha happen throughout the game, guys. Uh, like, like, I saw, like you saw, my computer started to explode and I need to send my IT team to take care of it. Uh, if the building is dirty, as you can see, there's just a lot of crap on the floor. I can, that's about as far as I can zoom in right here. Uh, you can see there's a lot of crap on the floor. That can make your staff unhappy. I did make my goal for inbound calls. But I lost, basically, from outbound in my back office. Because that's probably because I probably need to work on the efficiency of my building more than my workers aren't doing the work. I don't really know. Uh, no, it's good. I'm, I'm okay. Uh, another thing you could check out, if you find that your employees are not basically working at tip-top efficiency, you can, of course, go into the uh, filters. Well, not the filters, but the... Um, where is it here? You can go basically go into the game and you kind of look at your employees and gather how well each... or their mood and how well they're doing, how much money they're bringing in. And if you find a particular employee... So let's go ahead and let's filter out all these, these guys right here. I just want to see just my workers. If you find, for instance, that a worker is not bringing in more cash, and these guys I think are on vacation, which is why they're not uh, bringing any cash, you could fire them, or replace them, or educate them, or give them a raise. Like, oh, Damien's doing a shitty job. Maybe I should give him a raise, give him a vacation, move him to a different position, switch his schedule around. There's a lot of different micromanagement here that you can have to your advantage and take care of and really meticulously plan out your entire uh, call center, guys. As crazy as that sounds. Uh, and then, yeah, it's basically your, your job is to get more uh, contracts, as you can imagine, expand your your facility and get more things rolling here. I'm going to go through, go, I'll show you one more day, maybe something crazy will happen. Um, there's just a lot of different things you can do in this game, guys. But in general, that is kind of the nitty gritty of the game. You basically upgrade your buildings, you get basically... Uh, manage your, your construction, try to get an efficient looking building as much as possible is the key thing. And I think that is kind of the biggest uh, challenge and also a little bit of a hindrance in this game. Uh, there's like, for instance, uh, you can hire a manager, uh, an operational staff guy, and basically he will kind of make your workers more efficiently and make them less happy. Uh, but the thing is, he'll only go to the building certain ar around that built that particular floor. You have to place him just like any other worker at a desk. Uh, and you can't really tell where he's going to go to. I, I, I think this is something they're going to fix uh, soon, actually. I've, I've been reading up on this game. And the, the guy who basically made this game is really, like, jonesing to put out patches and listen to community feedback and make this as, as good as a game as you can get. Like, I think the Waz controls were actually something that was kind of new, too, as well. And they're just adding a lot more to this game to make it better and efficient and more fun 
uh, for the PC. It is also available on the, um, I think believe it's the, what, iOS? Uh, yeah, I want to say iOS. And you can play this game on whatever tablet or whatever iDevice you may have. So you can see that we're basically doing pretty good. We're about 1900 bucks in cash. Even though we're doing uh, overall terrible in getting our goals, we're still making enough revenue and cash to stay obviously in business and do what we need to do. Uh, they, like, there's just different kinds of employees. There's, there's coaches who basically are you know, improve the morale of your, your crew. There's uh, second line units. There's different kinds of office crews, different kinds of service crew. Handymen basically are the guys that kind of patch up your building when they look like crap. Let's see if I can find him. Is that his desk? I think he just took off. I don't really see him. Oh, there he is. He's currently fixing a crack in the wall that's formed right there. And I think it's just this game does a really good job of kind of showing off the chaos that can be a uh, cubicle-esque workplace. We were at about three grand here, which is pretty damn good, actually. And we're doing really good with our inbound calls. And that's one thing you have to do. You kind of just have to take your goals uh, time at a time, basically. Now that we got our inbound calls kind of under control, we want to get our out our outbound under control and then eventually our back office. And you just want to hit goals one at a time. And once you get those all under control, you can go ahead and start heading on to a, either a new project or another goal, basically. And just kind of, that's how I at least play the game. And expanding your business up, 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 and up, and up, and up, and up, and getting more bigger, better upgrades, training your guys. Uh, there is Steam achievements also. Um, you can uh, unlock a lot of things. Oh, I just got a Steam achievement right there. Look at that. Uh, you got an achievement. Tycoon number two, I ran your company for 25 days. You've been awarded 1000 bucks. Like I said, there's Steam achievements, Steam cards, all that steamy goodness here, guys. Another, one thing I do have to say that I, I I like this game a lot, guys. It's a lot of fun. It's a really cool, I think, idea for a uh, similar game, but I cannot stand the music. The music is just so happy-go-lucky, and it's just like, whoa, what the hell? I kind of want to like put like on some rock music or something. It's just the music is... Just a little too chipper and peppy for my taste. But that's a personal thing. That's not necessarily anything against the uh, the developer or anything like that. Just the music is just hilariously just way too upbeat for my taste. Control-wise, yeah. You're basically using a keyboard and mouse. Nothing really too hard to explain there. And the game does uh, control very well. It really isn't much of a problem. You can kind of manipulate things very easily. The one thing I do have a problem with, though, is that, for instance, if I wanted to... Um, let me see if I can do this here. If I wanted to move an employee, I have to build an entire other section before I can build and move an employee to another section, which can be slightly problematic uh, when you like have managers and people like that. It can just be a little bit of a hassle to move employees around. You have to build an entire other floor if you don't have an empty space. Uh, that's why I always kind of keep an empty space if I want to shift employees around um, at all times. I always try to keep like an empty space in my office or in a janitor's place or something like that. But I think you get a basic, really good idea of the game, guys. Like I said, there's just different kinds of research you could do, different kinds of um, products you'd be taking care of. Uh, crisis, crises can form, like your current client could go out of business, uh, and then you lose that business forever, and have to find a new client, and then you could go bankrupt, etc., 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 guys. It's a really cute simulation game, guys. Smooth Operators is a challenging game, guys, but it, it's it's not challenging to the point that you're going like, to rip your hair out. Like I mentioned earlier, this is an iOS game that has been ported to Steam, and it I think it's done very well. I haven't ran into many bugs, and the game looks great on my PC. If you like pixel graphics especially, with plenty of things to upgrade and things to micromanage, Smooth Operators will distract any Sim fan for hours. And again, I have to say, for its price, it comes packed full of replay value and addictive gameplay, guys. So give this game a shot. I think you will enjoy it. Again, just $2.99 on Steam, guys. So, big thanks to the developer for a chance to review this game. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe and I'll keep bringing you awesome indie games, guys. Until next time, play more indie games.